It's time for your April 7th fact of the day. For today, I thought it might be nice to do a birthday fact. So, you may ask, what birthday did I choose to celebrate today? Could it be St. Francis Xavier, who helped found the Jesuit Order of Catholic Priests? Well, no, I didn't choose him. How about William Wordsworth, who was Poet Laureate of Great Britain, and famous for writing poems such as this one, which is all about daffodils. No, not him either. Though I do think that being a poet and having your last name be Wordsworth is pretty awesome. In that case, maybe we're celebrating Jackie Chan, one of the most successful martial arts film stars of all time. No, not him either even though my brother was obsessed with him for a while when we were kids. No, today we're not celebrating the birthday of a person. Instead, I thought it fitting that we celebrate the birth of one of the most mind-blowingly game-changing pieces of technology in all of human history. The internet. That's right. The thing that's letting you listen to my voice right now. The thing that let me research this whole presentation and the thing that lets us video chat with one another from thousands of miles away while having doggy noses and ears superimposed on our faces. Before I can really explain why today might be the Internet's birthday, we need to talk about when is the Internet's birthday? To any of you who've ever heard me explain anything before, you might not be surprised to hear me say, it's complicated. You see, I would say there are four possible dates we could use for the Internet's birthday. April 7th, 1969. September 2nd, 1969. October 29th, 1969. Or January 1st, 1983. I definitely don't like that last one because that makes me older than the internet, and I refuse to accept that. Anyway, for today, I'm obviously using the first date as our fact of the day, but let's talk about the others first. September 2nd, 1969. This is the day the first connection was made between two computers. Both computers were actually in the same room. I know that didn't seem all that impressive today, we connect all sorts of computers and devices without even thinking about it. But back then, computers weren't designed to do that yet. That would be like being able to take two old-fashioned electronic alarm clocks, hook a cable up between the two of them, and have them be able to see what time the other one was showing. Computers just weren't designed to do that. But the research team at UCLA made it work. Less than two months later, we have October 29th, 1969, and on that date, they managed to send a message from a computer at UCLA to one at Stanford, hundreds of miles away. They were on the phone with each other while they did it. The guys at UCLA were like, Okay, we're going to start typing. Are you ready? Yes, we're ready. We're typing an L. It came through! We got an L on our end. Okay, we're typing an O. The O came through too. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, we're typing a G. And the whole system crashed. The first message sent over the internet was supposed to be log on, but it ended up just being the letters L and O. That takes us to January 1st, 1983. This one is pretty technical, but this was the day that the internet switched from NCP to TCP IP, which basically means the internet switched from a very primitive way of communicating that could never handle more than a couple hundred computers at most to basically working the way it does now. We've improved on it since then, of course, but at its heart, this was the day that the internet's underlying programming basically started working the way it's working for you right this very second. With that out of the way, let's do our real fact of the day. Today is April 7th, and for today at least, 
I'm going to call this the Internet's real birthday. On April 7, 1969, the team which would later make the first computer connection in their lab and send the first long-distance message published a document called Request for Comments 1. It was written by a guy named Steve Crocker, and it was basically the blueprint for how to make the thing we now call the Internet into a reality. It had some explanations for how things would work, it had a few questions that would need to be answered, and it even had what you might call the Internet's first picture. Isn't it beautiful? All that's missing is the right Snapchat filter. Uh, anyway. This was just the first request for comments filed to be posted. To this day, these documents are how the Internet has been designed and improved. Every major change and update is posted in one of the request for uh, comments files, which the people in charge of defining how the Internet works, read, and then comment on. There are thousands of RFCs today and you can still easily read each one just as they were originally written and track the story of how the internet has grown into the all-encompassing behemoth it is today. The most recent RFC came out less than a week ago, though, actually, there's a long-standing tradition of posting a joking one on April 1st. This year, the joke is based on a real thing about how computers soon won't work because quantum computers will be able to pass data instantly. Yeah, listen, it's only a funny joke if you're into quantum mechanics. Before that, we had a new RFC published just last month, this one about ways to improve security and keeping your data encrypted. These documents are the Internet's living history, and today marks the 51st anniversary of when that history began. It may not seem like much, but take my word for it. This file right here is where all of this began. Every video you've streamed, every online order you've placed, every online game, every meme you've read on your phone, every photo you've liked, it all started right here. You know what? This is the 21st century. I feel like something's missing. There. That's better. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Make sure you're taking care of your schoolwork for this week. Please contact me with any questions at all. And I'll close by reminding everyone, stay safe and stay healthy.